Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Coffee with Carl. I am your host, Carl Zellner, one of the attorneys here with Anderson Business Advisors. And today I want to talk a little bit about the use of limited partnerships in real estate. Uh, There are some avenues in which a limited partnership may work for you in real estate uh, and some specific scenarios that we're actually leaning more towards limited partnerships at this point. Um, First thing is, let's talk about a little bit what a limited partnership is and why we tend to use more LLCs than LPs, which is the abbreviation. Uh, Number one is, in an LLC, all partners have limited liability. In a limited partnership, it's only the limited partners that have liability. Uh, The general partner actually has unlimited liability, so normally you need to set another entity up to catch that unlimited (laughs) liability portion in order to function with a limited partnership. Uh, Another distinction is that limited partnership interest is presumed to be passive interest. And there's some intricacies that go into running a limited partnership where you don't want the, say, activities or responsibilities of limited partners to bridge or mesh with that general partner. Otherwise, you could be cons- you could turn a limited partner into the general partner. And once again, that unlimited liability is something to be concerned about there. So uh, there's another one other piece I want to talk about with limited partnerships as you've become, you know, you may be familiar with ha- hearing or talking about family limited partnerships. And really, when we talk about a family limited partnership, it's just a limited partnership. The family portion is a marketing tool. Uh, all it is is a limited partnership with family members in it. So I'm going to give you a quick list here of where we tend to use limited partnerships uh, because there are some uses for them. Number one would be in California, especially uh, if you're doing a flip over about currently over about a half a million dollars expected on the flip or excuse me, the return, uh, because California will charge the $800 franchise fee based on the gross receipts of that entity. So that that $500,000 is a pretty even mark when you consider using a limited partnership because the franchise fee, when we talk about it, $800 really starts there for an LLC. When you're looking at a limited partnership, That's where it stops. So there's in one case, we can use a limited partnership to stop the overages on the franchise fee in California that you may pay if you're, say, doing a high-end flip. So there's one reason to use one. Uh, Another reason to use one may be if you're working with an IRA account. Every once in a while, it makes sense to do that depending on the restrictions or issues you're having with a custodian. Uh, also, in other real estate forms, you technically can use them anywhere. The, the structure, though, you have to balance the numbers on it because realistically, what we would want in, say, a California limited partnership would be to have a local general partner. So even though I'm setting up a limited partnership, so looking at that flip scenario, that limited partnership I would want a general partner to be an LLC with, we'll just call it nominal percentage of ownership, which means very little or just some. Um, And then I would set up the LP. So now what I'm looking at is setting up a general partnership or excuse me, a general partner in the state of California that would be an LLC. So looking at that $800 a year there, but that general partner can stay around for multiple deals. So you keep the general partner set up and then you're doing your single flips in a limited partnership and then shutting down those limited partnerships as you complete those flip deals. So that's going to be your most common usage these days. Uh, Like I said, the LLC is a better universal tool because all partners are presumed or do have limited liability versus having a general partner sit out there. Uh, But I want to talk about that because it is a short or a small change in strategy uh, in California due to that those franchise fees. So with that being said, 
That's it for this episode of Coffee with Carl. Once again, thank you for joining me. Uh, I encourage you to all to take advantage of all of our free content out there, whether that's Tax Tuesday uh, with Toby, whether that's Bowman's business, business Brief with Michael Bowman. We've even got Tony Talks, uh, as well as Clint's real estate channel specifically. But don't uh, t- don't leave all the free content on the table. I want you to take advantage of it. So thanks for joining me. I will catch you on the next time with coffee with next episode of Coffee with Carl. Uh, until then, invest safely, and I hope for high percentage returns for all of you. Thank you. 